Good evening. My name is Ashley Nance, and for my discussion board topic, I chose to examine the importance of Puritanism in the American founding. Too often in the study of history, we consider America's founding fathers to be men such as George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and Patrick Henry. We fail to realize that the men from whom these fathers acquired most of their beliefs were the Puritans. In his article from the Journal of Politics entitled Pope Bill's Puritans, Christianity, and the American Founding, Sanford Kessler, the Associate Professor of Political Science at North Carolina State University, points out that we tend to mistakenly trace America's origins through a philosophy, primarily that of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, rather than to the religious tradition of the Puritans. A close examination of the structure of the United States government and the basic principles upon which it was established reveals this very strong and very obvious impact that Puritanism had on the founding of our nation. As we learned this week in the video presentation entitled Comprehensive Puritan Faith, the Puritans believed that all of life was to be reformed by God and that the Bible should be the foundation for social, legal, and family norms. This manifested itself primarily in the form of church government, which they advocated. They emphasized the rule of the church by elected elders, not by a king or by a bishop. Self-governance and the idea of church autonomy were of the utmost importance to them. They did not feel that one single individual should be responsible for making decisions pertaining to the function and the well-being of the church, especially when that individual was geographically distanced from the church and was not involved in its everyday happenings. Instead, they chose to elect their representatives, otherwise known as elders, who were members of the church body to govern them. This form of representational government served as the model for the democratic republican style of government which the framers of the Constitution defined and to which the United States adheres today. The Puritans also laid the foundations for the concept of individual human rights when they composed the Massachusetts Body of Liberties in 1641. This document served as the first Bill of Rights and was unique in the fact that rather than just list laws prohibiting certain actions, it outlined specific rights which the Puritans believed were given to every human being by God himself. As such, these rights could not be removed or infringed upon by the government. In our textbook by Mark Knoll, we read that there was no separation in the Puritan mind between public and private life, between church and the state, or between the individual and society. All spheres of life were created and designed by God to be connected to one another. George Marsden, in his critique of Perry Miller's Rehabilitation of the Puritans, echoes this sentiment when he writes, Critics prior to Miller played the trick of evaluating the Puritans in terms of their acts in the spheres of politics, economics, and personal morality. Miller, on the other hand, observes that the action was only secondary in the Puritan scheme of things and was worthless to the Puritan without the profound piety which was its source. In this excerpt, we see that Miller acknowledged the fact that there was no separation in the various areas of life in the minds of the Puritans. They were all connected, not only to each other, but more importantly to their devotion to the Lord and their belief that he designed the world to operate that way. Charles Cohen also acknowledges this connection in his review of Robert Middlecoff's book, The Mathers. Cohen states that Middlecoff identifies the Puritans as, quote, sensitive men whose passions informed their theology, end quote. Even to Middlecoff, 
it was clear that the beliefs of the Puritans were deeply rooted in their views of how God had designed the world. It can be all too easy for us to neglect the influence that the Puritans had upon the founding of the United States. Yet, we must not allow ourselves to fall into the trap of forgetting the many ways in which they helped to create the American nation and the Christian ideals upon which it was built.